Uh, so is it the... Welcome. My name is Jim Hayes, uh, and I'm going to go through a little open source here in the view. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, I'm going to do a little, what is Wikidata? How does it interact a little bit with Wikipedia? Give an example, and then we'll get into some metrics and numbers, and then... Future problems. It's been a difficult. So, my example for Wikidata, or sorry, Wikisource interacting with Wikipedia is women of the yeah. year. So, uh, Rosie Stevenson Goodnight uh, was, was doing scholarship on this. Uh, Biographical Dictionary in the 19th Century, century. and you can see her uh, her article there on the right-hand side. But she was using uh, Google Books as a reference, so that's that made us all sad. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see the um, the wiki uh, course uh, version from from the printed book. So what I did is I went back and transcribed. Uh, book, which made it much more wiki friendly. So, uh, for instance, cropping the image so the images were much easier to use. So this uh, this reference book had a thousand images of women in it that made it um, much easier to then write their uh, biographical articles. So here's showing you uh, the scan um, from the book on the right hand side. You can see that. It's kind of fuzzy and low resolution. So by cleaning up the OCR scan, we can make it much more friendly. And then also when, when we do the EPUB um, download, then it's much nicer for an e-reader. Um, so quickly going to some metrics. So English Wikipedia or English uh, Wikisource, um, we, woohoo, we're at 3.3 million total pages, um, 0.65 are validated. So part of our process is we have humans look at, um, each page and proofread it. So that's the yellow. And then it's validated by a second person and then it's green. So that's, then we, it's good to go and we publish it. Um, and the red there is just, it's been saved uh, without proofreading, and that's either by a bot or an IP editor. Um, so of the point, uh, 0.65 million pages validated, that's equal to uh, 2,042 works. Um, in proofread, we're at 1.3 million pages. We uh, passed... One million pages there two years ago. Woohoo! That that's very exciting, and that's equivalent to uh, seven thousand five hundred texts. And then at the red, we have a million not proofread. So that, as you see there, we had a little blip up in not proofread um, when um, user Fay uh, uploaded a million texts to Commons, and then the bot came in and and brought a whole bunch of pages over. Automatically, we have a little internal discussion about is having lots of not proofread a problem or not. Um, my point of view is that work in progress isn't necessarily a problem as long as it's kind of stable. As you can see, we've got a, a nice trend going up and we're, we're continuing to have progress in our um, proofreading. So having a stable and uh, flat line for our uh, not proofread for me is a good thing. Um, then by comparison, uh, our, our, I'm kind of concentrating on English wiki source here. So for French wiki source, uh, they've got um, 3.6 million pages and they're, but they're somewhat better at uh, proofreading and validation. Um, and uh, these two languages are kind of the big two languages for a wiki source. Uh, there are, uh, there's a kind of uh, another story to be filled in about smaller languages that are that are growing 
rapidly, but from a smaller base. Uh, now that was kind of the output of um, the source. Here's some of the inputs. So um, we're kind of stable with editors, um, uh, 70 users per day and around 2,000 edits per day. Um, and then you can see IP editors and bot editors. So that's that's mainly for the not proofread. Um, this is um, Wikiscan here that gives you this metric. Uh, the old Fay tools, uh, uh, sadly, has gone away now. So this is what we're relying on for our metrics. Then the other um, dashboard that Wikiscan gives you uh, shows you 366 users, 194 of which are five edits per month, and 75 hundred edits per month. So that's kind of giving you uh, active and then very active. Okay, uh, then for the future, uh, in February, we're having a big wiki source conference in Indonesia, in Bali. So there's a lot of excitement in Bali because they were doing um, transcriptions of palm leaves in Pali and other languages, which is very interesting. So Indic languages, 10 years ago, we had a conference in Vienna and um, part of the outcome of that was we got more right to left transcription and then we also got more Indic language support. So over time, more character sets are getting kind of you are ingested or supported by Google and other places. So the, the, um, there's a lot of interest there. There are some people in Indic languages that would rather um, transcribe a wiki source than edit Wikipedia in their in their uh, Indic language. And that's kind of the end. If you have questions or comments, I'd be happy to respond. Okay. Yes, yes, Kevin. I might have missed it, but in those graphs, with yeah. the proofread versus not, what was the difference between the green and the yellow? Oh, okay. The difference between the green and the yellow, right. Okay, so this is wiki source uh, kind of color coding. So when you go to save the, so it's it's progress. So when you go to save your page on wiki source and you just don't proofread it at all, you can click on the red, there's a red button there, and then it's then it shows it up as red on all the all the metrics. If you proofread it and you think you're comfortable, then yeah, you cleaned up all the OCRs, then you click the yellow button. Okay, and you can save that. Now you can't progress it to green by yourself. Okay, a second person has to come in and look over your shoulder and say, Yeah, they got that right. And then they can. It's the second person can save it as green and we'll call that validated. And then we kind of push that through and call it done. I'm actually okay. quite impressed by those numbers. Like that's a lot of work that goes. Yes. Yeah. So, and yeah, the, the scale kind of uh, is a little, uh, I like the semi log output from phase tools better uh, because you can see there, we have a, we kind of have a steady growth right here, which is good. That's why, you know, we're continuing on. Uh, if we had more people, we could grow faster, but. And it's kind of like a micro edit too, if you're, you know, transcribing, because you're just, you're just looking at typography and you're looking at, uh, at uh, artifacts from the scan. Uh, and uh, thanks to, uh, Internet Archive supporting Tesseract, the, the scan, the OCRs are getting better over time. So, you know, you might have an old uh, saved page that's red from 10 years ago that looks kind of ucky. And then if you if you hit the retranscribe again, it will give you a much better OCR output that you can then, so you have less editing to do manually. And I guess follow-up question since you just said that, um, has there been discussion is like, let's say you have all these old, totally not proofread transcripts from 10 years ago, like to just mass retranscribe them with the new OCR. Um, be well, typically if it's, 
if it's been proofread, it's pretty good. It's the level of effort to manually transcribe it from 10 years ago. Um, that's a problem. The the other the other controversy we kind of have is we had a lot, we have a lot of uh, that I don't have the graph for. We have a lot of Gutenberg things that got kind of copy pasted over. And we like Gutenberg, but they're more of a TypeScript than us. We tend to like to um, replicate the printed work closer. So we'll have we'll have we have Greek and Latin and uh, italics and uh, small caps, and we'll we'll format title pages a little more closely than Gutenberg. Uh, and also, they don't have the scan backup. So sometimes Gutenberg will have a mishmash of like three different sources. So, um, so having a scan back transcription is kind of a big push for quality that we have. Um, we have a lot of legacy Gutenberg cut and paste stuff that we need to go back and redo. That's kind of, uh, so it's it's kind of a quality struggle we have. Um, the thing is about having kind of work in progress with non scan back is that. Um, it's it's nicer to people that come. You know, it's kind of we're we're trying to be very friendly when people come on board and say, okay, fine, we'll kind of accept your safe page here, even though um, we prefer that you proofread. You have, have to start small. Other questions at all? Okay. Are there plans to uh, tackle the the red part because it seems like that proportion just doesn't seem to go down anytime. Uh, well, it's it's a kind of intention there because we have people who run bots that want to save red pages because we won't let them proofread them using a bot only. So the bot will, you know, if the if the book's on commons, they can make an index page here and then they'll have the bot save every page in red. And then it kind of gets added to the added to that backlog, and then friendly humans have to come along and come behind the bot and then proofread it. Um, it for me, it's stable because it's not growing. So uh, I don't think it's that much of a problem. Uh, it's kind of a community. Um, uh, tension that we have that people want to add red text because they can read them then, you know, they can make a work and complete and have, but it's not proofread. Yeah, so what tools do you use to proofread? Is it just like you're looking at the two side by side, the original scan and then the text, you're just looking for mistakes or is there yeah. you know, the strategies? Uh, yeah, uh, let's see here. So. This gives you, I can, I could also show it to you live, but typically you'll have the, your scan, you'll have a side-by-side -side view. So you have your scan on the right-hand side, and then you'll have a big text box on the left-hand side. So if you, if you know source editor, it just looks like source editor and you, and then you have italics and you'll, um, you'll have your, um, your small caps there and your bold. And then you and then you format your image like that. There's some special templates to to format the image, and then it saves just like a regular Wikipedia page. Uh, and then the the fancy part is that um, you can transclude um, page by page and 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 stitch them all together, and they make a chapter. So then that gives you an e-reader friendly version because then now you can read chapter by chapter on your device. Okay, another quick yes, Kevin. Uh, is it you said you can use like a source editor. Does it also support visual editor or does that cost too much? Yes. Yeah, so we were asking them to do visual editor before 10 years ago. They they kind of turned it on for us, but they didn't change the menus. So it it works. It has some functionality, but Wikisource has kind of stranger menus that don't that Wikipedia doesn't. They don't like each other. You know, 
the the Wikipedia functions we don't need, and we need other ones that tend to be at the very very bottom of the of the menu, which is unfriendly. So I'm afraid source editing is kind of a must. Make it work, but here. All right, so um, this shows you it's multilingual. So here's some of the other bigger languages. Here's English. And here's, we have a kind of monthly challenge that, show, that shows you some suggested workflows here if you're new. Most people like to bring their own work and work on their own book, but here we go. So here's, uh, let's see here. This one's, mainly done. So this is showing you the index view. So how do we organize a book? Here's, you've got some fancy wiki code over here that um, that matches the scan number to the page number. So we're doing the page offset here to show you the page number versus the scan number. So for instance, let's try this. so here it's Scan page number 13, but it's really also this. Do that, sorry. Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> okay, so. Let's see here. So let's look at history. And you can see somebody created the page in 2016, and then it got proofread in 2017 and now validated in 2021. Also, so for instance, if you have a frontispiece we can incorporate images right into the book and then it will um, it'll show up on your computer just like this in the right sequence. And with, see, we we formatted the titles of the image to scan. Uh, let's see. Okay, so so here's another multi-volume work here, and we've got some. Okay, so see, this is a typical, just saved without being proofed. Okay. So it, we normally take this. Um, part here and we have to add it up above into the header section. So each part, each page here has three parts. It has a header section, then it has a body with the text that gets stitched together, and then it has a footer section with a, with a page number, say. So the paragraphs are done. That's pretty good. That's a pretty easy one. To just go and, um, but if I try to edit it, I don't think I can uh, advance it to proofread here. So we better edit. There you go. Here's the here's the header section, so we could go put that up there. See, it won't let me go to yellow here, say, because I'm my IP editor here, but I'll go change it. Uh, oh well. And then if you, uh, so that's a red page. If it's a blank page, you'll see here it hasn't been saved at all. And so we can just save it right now. Hopefully, let's see here. Okay. And notice, see, it's got some um, uh, 
uh, it's got some italics there that the I uh, know CR didn't like that much. So you'll have, you know, those are the those are the places that the humans have to get involved. But yeah, this is a pretty good scan because the um the paragraphs are pretty well done. Uh, you can see here that see at each uh, soft page break, there's a um, there's a hyphenation. So typically we'll take those out so that everything flows right, and then uh, typically we'll put in the M dash there, which is it got picked up in the scan. So that's uh, back in the day it used not to the OCRs used not to pick up the um, M dash that well. Any other questions, comments? Yeah. Do you, in your initial uh, OCR, are you using just like one OCR for all documents, all periods of time? How does that work? Yes. Yeah. So we're we're using the Tesseract engine, which is an improvement on the old uh, OCR engine. But uh, yeah, uh, it's the same one that they use on the not the uh, Indic languages which are not Latin character sets. And the Tesseract trains on the uh, way of uh, your improvements that you make to it. So it gets feedback in the OCR. So uh, over time, it should improve if you're using non-Latin character sets. For, for Latin ones, it's, it's pretty darn good. So as you see here, it, it kind of doesn't like the oops on there. So that, that's a Greek letter. It has a little trouble with that. It's getting better at it, but yeah. I've seen a few uh, foundation projects, like trying to use like LLMs, like to do various things experimentally. Are they doing anything like that or just any projects in general to sort of automate the front end and uh, be editing for you? No, I haven't seen any automated OCR here. We're, we're relying on the humans to kind of pick this up. The other thing too is we're kind of sticking to public domain and printed books, printed material. There are other uh, transcription projects like Transcribe SI and Library of Congress where they're they're transcribing um, type or um, manuscripts because again the OCR really falls down at that, uh, and so they they're building their text layer just, you know, with the with the crowdsourcing. You're avoiding those just because the OCR does, you really can't, just can't do those practically right now? Yeah, and plus copyright is a little, you know, if it's a, if it's a manuscript, copyright's a little harder because it hasn't been published. So it's in their collection. They want to have, find it and then use, you know, once they have a text layer, then they can start doing the, you know, keyword searching and all that stuff. So that's that's more of a priority for them to make it more accessible. Whereas for us, we we all the OCR gives us a text layer. There's a text layer there, even in Internet Archive. So findability, you know, findability is a, a little. Low. We're kind of just formatting the findability here. If that's it, thank you very much. And yeah, let's let's have a good